Hi, this is Jim Wright, and in this presentation we will talk about some of the best practices for Solid Edge Cam Pro regarding model changes that may occur. Our agenda looks like this. We'll talk about how to make model changes without file revision. We'll then discuss the wave geometry linker and geometry objects. And then we'll show you how to make model changes with the file revision, in other words, when the file has been named. When we're making model changes that don't require a file revision, in other words, we're not changing the name of the file, the process is relatively easy. We simply load the change model, we open the existing setup for that change model in CAM, and then we simply regenerate the existing work. Let's take a look at a demo of that. Well first, let's consider the most simple of scenarios. I've got a, uh, a model here that needs to be machined and it's being held in a vise. So this is an assembly with three components, fairly simple stuff. So when I want to machine that, I also have this assembly already loaded into CAM Pro. So here is the same set of models in CAM Pro and you can see that we've got three operations, one to face the top of the part to get some of the excess stock off and then a floor wall operation to machine the area around the, uh, the little plus sign and then a spot drilling and drilling operation. So no problem, everything looks good, but what about model changes? Well in this simple scenario we switch back to Solid Edge and we make a model change. So edit this model, We'll move this face five millimeters and that should be good, right? We send this revised model to Solid Edge Cam Pro. Have to save it first, of course. And you can see that the transfer is immediately made. And all of our operations are out of date because the model has changed. So, no problem. We simply generate all the tool paths. And we're, we're good to go. Very quickly, very easily. An updated model has been put into CAM Pro. We've updated the, the tool paths and we're ready to do whatever else we need to do. But what about the scenario in which the model is not only revised but then saved as a revision because that's what happens a lot in the engineering world, right? So we'll switch back to Solid Edge. And this time we'll delete this model, remove it from the assembly and we'll add a new model, a revision of the first file. Use assembly strains to mate it into position. That's the proper positioning for this. So we've got a revised model. It looks a little bit like the old model, but it has some changes to it. Let's send that to Cam Pro and see what happens. Tools, Cam Pro, obviously we have to save it. So the revised model comes across no problem, but the operations themselves are not right. If I hit the Generate Toolpath button, Object contains geometry not in the current reference set. Same thing for the floor wall operation, drilling operations too. If we were to look at the um, geometry view, you'll notice that in the workpiece, we don't we have uh, geometry not in the current reference set. So, what do we do in a situation like this? Well, that's what the rest of this video is about. Now let's take a look at the wave geometry linker. First, what is it? 
Well, you can think of the wave geometry linker like a piece of modeling clay that you can make conform to any model shape. So if you wanted to make it conform to the current design model, that's fine. If you have a new model, a revised model, you can make it conform to that new shape as well. Furthermore, the wave copy can be either associative or non-associative so that if the underlying body changes, then so does our wave body. When should I use it? Well, it should be used whenever you think that the underlying geometry has a possibility to change or if you feel like there's a very good possibility that the underlying geometry will be revised and the file saved with a new name. What about geometry objects? What are they? Well, geometry objects are, you can think of them as a bucket that I'm going to put a set of faces or curves or pieces of geometry into. And then instead of having to pick those faces each time in an operation, you can simply refer to that bucket where you've already stored them. This is really helpful when you're doing drilling operations, for example. So if you have to spot drill, drill, bore, and ream a hole, You'd have to pick those faces in four different operations, four separate times. With a geometry object, you can pick those faces one time and then have all of the future drilling operations refer to it. When should I use a geometry object? Well, as I mentioned, a really good time to use it is when multiple operations will address the same set of faces. For example, spot drilling, drilling, boring, and reaming a set of holes. or if you think that you will use it for revised files so that you can point to the new faces rather than always be pointing to the old faces of the old body. Model changes with file revision. Now that we understand a little bit about wave and geometry objects, if we combine these two things together, we can use them in a process that will actually create a very associative set of tool paths to almost any body that we choose. Now, it does take slightly longer to initiate because you have to create the wave geometry linked body. You then have to go create the geometry uh, objects and then tie the operations to those objects. But it does allow you to maintain associativity across different body types and you can quickly adapt to revised models. So overall, it will reduce your NC programming time. Let's take a look. So when I created this original uh, NC program for this file, I basically did it the quickest way I possibly could. In the geometry view for the part, I picked this body right here. In other words, the same body that came over from Solid Edge. Inside the operations, I picked the faces that I wanted to use to specify where I wanted to machine. So, here is the face that I chose for the cut area floor for this facing one operation. And of course this lower face is the one that I chose for the floor wall operation. Nothing wrong with that, those work fine. However, if you anticipate that you will need to make changes to the model and those changes involve saving it as a new name and making it a file revision, there's a better methodology that we probably need to use. So let me set this up first. First I'm going to go into each one of these operations and I'll remove the individual faces in there because you can't have faces selected outside of the object and then also inside. We just don't allow that. So I'm going to remove that face. I've sped this bit of the video up so that you can see that I'm removing all of the faces from the selection. Next what I'll do is I'll go into the workpiece and I will remove that. So I have no geometry in any of the operations. I don't have any geometry in the workpiece. So kind of difficult to machine that way, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I will create a wave geometry link copy of this body. You can think of the wave geometry linker like a, a piece of clay, right? You can mold a 
clay into any object you want it to be. That's what the wave geometry linker does. It basically becomes whatever body you select. So I choose assemblies, wave geometry linker. I'll set it to a body and then I pick this body and that is the body that I want to copy. Now it's kind of difficult to see but there's actually two bodies laying on top of each other now. The original body plus the one that I just copied. So to make that a little bit easier to see I'll turn off the original body and then in the part navigator I'll change the display of the linked body. So edit object display So now my copied body is a different color than the original body. I can turn on the original body. You can kind of see what's going on there. So I'm going to leave the original body turned off because the copied body, the wave geometry body, is the one that I want to use. So back inside of Workpiece, I can now choose for the part geometry, I'll choose this copy, this associative copy. So the next step in the process is to create geometry objects that we can then use as containers for whatever faces we select. So to do that, I'll go into the workpiece. I'll say right mouse button, insert geometry. The type of geometry I'm going to pick is for faces. So that's a mill area subtype. And I'll call this uh, top of part because this is the one that I will use to identify the face milling operation top of the part. And of course now I can take this facing operation and move it inside of this top of part geometry object. So essentially what I've done here is I've pulled the face selection out of the operation and moved it into this geometry group. And that's important because later on when we switch revised files, we will need to be able to respecify the face geometry without going into the operation itself. We'll do the same thing for the lower face that we use for the floor wall operation. Insert geometry. We'll say bottom face. And of course the face that we're choosing is this one. And then we can move the floor wall operation inside of the bottom face. We'll do this one more time for the holes. And there's actually an advantage um, but for doing this for holes because with hole drilling or with hole creation, a lot of times we pick the same geometry over and over and over again. So what I can do with this is I can pick the geometry one time and then use it multiple times. This is also helpful when we um, do certain types of three axis milling where we have a series of faces that we need to rough, semi finish and finish or maybe we want to do steep and non-steep containment on the same set of faces. So you pick the faces once and you can use multiple operations on them. Makes it kind of nice. So I've moved all of these uh, operations underneath their respective geometry objects and there's no geometry selected in the operations now so all I need to do now is simply generate the operations. So from a practical standpoint we didn't change anything we just moved the selection of the faces outside of the operations and we also use this wave geometry body uh, the, and as our work part doesn't make a lot of sense to do that if we're never going to have model changes because it's extra work we don't need to do it but the advantage comes when we have a revised model and we're going to talk about that next so now we'll go through the same scenario as before where we're not going to use the original file but we're going to add a revised file into the assembly course we need to apply assembly constraints
So there's my revised file in the context of the assembly. We can send it right over to CAMPRO as soon as we save it. And you notice that it looks a little bit weird because there are actually two bodies laying on top of each other. We have the the revised body that was sent over from Solid Edge, but we also have the wave geometry link copy of the original body. So let me kind of show you what we what we have here. So first I'll turn off the revised body so you can see there's the copy that we that we have. Remember our clay body. And then we can turn off the linked body so that you can see the new body. So what do we do in this case? Well, we did all that work up front so that we can save ourselves some work on the back side. So here's what we do. First thing we do is we make this linked body point to the new design body. So we edit it and we're going to make it point to this body right here. So we simply point to it and say OK. And you notice that everything changes. We don't have two bodies laying on top of each other. We actually do, but, but they're identical, so they're difficult to see. Now I can go in and turn off the Rev A body, and you're seeing only the wave geometry link copy. Next thing we do is in the operation navigator, we go to the geometry view, and we have to repick the faces because remember the faces were part of the original body, so they're no longer there anymore. So I say, okay, the top of the part is that guy. The bottom face is this guy. And the holes are these. Once that little bit of work is done, we can now generate the operations and they're all pointing to the new geometry. So that's a simple example, but you can see how that would be very helpful for any time a revised model is changed. So in summary, there are two methods for maintaining associativity from model changes. Using wave and geometry objects, it does take longer to set up. However, if you anticipate that files will be revised and the name will be changed, this is the better method. It also works great for foreign CAD data like SOLIDWORKS files. If you're just making a, a one-off kind of a job where you may make a few model changes inside SolidEdge, then you don't have to use wave or geometry objects. It's very fast and it will also maintain associativity as long as you don't change the file name. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.